Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So I've been working in the power platform space for about three to four years now and a question I'm consistently getting is how can I even land my first job in the first place? So a reason you're probably subscribed to this channel is because you're either in two camps. You already have a job and are trying to level up within that career or you're looking for a job within the power platform space and looking to grow your skills and get educated so you can land your first job. Now, today I want to create this video and effectively build you a roadmap to going from zero all the way up to getting your first job within the power platform space. So it's really hot in the UK. I've got a blaring ring light literally in my face. Aye, aye! So sorry if I look a little bit hot and bothered today but we're gonna crack on with this because I thought it was an important video to make nevertheless. So today we're going to go over how you can land your first job in the Power Platform. So this video is going to assume that you have no prior knowledge of the Power Platform, you understand what it is, what benefits it can give you and in your life, but you don't really understand what you need to learn to land your first job. So this video is going to assume zero knowledge and if you have checked off any of the steps in this video, then just try and plug in your situation so you can best use it. So the first step that I have for any person trying to break into the Power Platform is to get the PL900 certification. So the PL900 is the Microsoft Power Platform Fundamental Certification and within this space, and I've spoke about this before, but certifications get a lot of stick. Now, in some ways I understand why, because there's a lot of merit to the argument that they might not exactly give you the skills needed to do the job, but the PL900 learning path that Microsoft has set out for you is by far one of my favorite on Microsoft Learn. And it gives you all of the fundamentals, at least from a theoretical perspective, that you need about the Power Platform. There's even areas and action steps where you can start building in the Power Platform, but we'll get into that into the second step of this framework. But this first step is really guiding you towards that learning path, going through what Microsoft has set out for you to get your basis of the Power Platform solid and then my advice from that would be to also take the certification because what we're trying to do here is build our skills, yes, but also make you more employable. Now, in the beginning, certifications can really, really help you, which is why it's one of the first things on this list. It shows a willingness to learn and then also building those skills in the, in the process. So I really recommend taking the PL900. Now, actually sitting the exam can be quite costly. So if you're a student, you can get benefits using the Student Hub. Microsoft give you these foundational certifications for free as a student, and if you're not, I'd highly recommend trying to get your company to invest into one of these certifications for you. If you can articulate the benefit, I'm sure they can find 120 pounds, I think, in GBP to take your certification, especially if it's growing the skills that you bring to the company. But taking the PL900 is well worth the investment just to get your foot in the door, get those foundations stuck in your head, and then you can move on to the next step here. Now, the second point I have in this roadmap is to create a developer environment and start developing. Now, I'm a huge advocate for not just having the theoretical information, that is important, but applying it is one of the most important things that you can do. So actually setting up your developer environment, making sure you have an area to experiment, to build your portfolio in, to try out new features, is really, really important to your learning journey, no matter what skill you're learning. Now, you can do this in conjunction with the first step that we've allocated on this roadmap, or you can do it after. I recommend doing it with it because the PL900 learning path has some areas where you can do some practical work and it'd be really good to get your hands dirty while you're in your early stages. So you just understand what the technology looks like. Now, you don't have to be an expert in the technology, nor do you have to build something that works or is best practice, etc. But just having a space where you can experiment with, with new features as and when you need to is really, really important in your journey. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, how can I create a Power Apps developer environment for myself? Well, you can actually get it for free. So what I'm gonna do is put a video in the description that I've made, I've already created a video on that. So what I'll do is I'll link that to you and then you can go check it out and create your developer environment. A question I get a lot of as well is when I do get my developer environment, what do I start developing? Well, just so this isn't a blocker for you, I'm gonna give you a few options so you can get started rather than just be like, oh, you know, what, what can I actually develop in the first place? So the first one is ask ChatGPT, give it your situation and say, hey, I'm trying to build a portfolio or build a project in the Power Platform space, what should I build? And it will give you something tailored, you know, even if it's not perfect, it will actually give you an idea of something you can use. Now, the second thing I'd recommend is build something that you actually find useful. I've seen people build things like expense trackers from Canvas apps on, on their phones to timesheet management on model-driven apps. You have a variety of options that you can use in your day-to-day -day, and it might even drive you to start building that even more because you're actually gonna get some 
more practical benefit of building this thing that's going to help you. And who knows, maybe it can help others. Now, the third thing you can do is follow my free course. So I've got a free course on my YouTube channel going over the Power Platform fundamentals. Now, I do want to reiterate that this course isn't going to prepare you for your PL900 certification. That's what the learning path is for, but it will give you a practical use case that you can build end to end and actually experiment with the Power Platform. So go at your own discretion, as long as you're building something and starting to build that portfolio, at least these will give you a start. Now, the third thing on this roadmap is to combine the core three. Now, the Power Platform has three different aspects to it, which I think are essential to actually breaking into the field. So getting good at these three things is really important to land your first job. The first is Power Apps, so that's Canvas Apps and Model Driven Apps. The second is Power Automate, so knowing about scheduled flows, instant flows, automated flows, what those all mean and what benefits they can give you. And then finally, the Microsoft Dataverse, which is the native database for the Power Platform. So this is what I refer to as the core three, and I deem as the most important skills for you to know to land your first job in this space. So my advice is to master these skills first before you start learning anything else and get overwhelmed by what the Power Platform can offer you. Obviously dip into things you're interested in, like Copilot, I'm sure a lot of you are looking into that. But these three things are really what are being used mainly within organizations right now at this time of recording. So when you start developing your portfolio, just keep in mind that you should build a solution which involves Power Apps, Power Automate and Dataverse. So those three should give you a start for the solution that you will build. Okay, so let's just touch base here. So we've covered three aspects of the roadmap. So you've taken your PL900 certification, you've created a developer environment and have a use case to start building that uses the core three. So that's Power Apps, Power Automate and Dataverse. So now what I want you to be doing is doubling down on your data skills. Now, I might disappoint you a little bit here because what you expected from the Power Platform and what it actually is might be different. Now, let me just tell you, the Power Platform is a data game, right? If you don't have your data foundations intact, it's going to be very difficult for you to build efficient solutions within the Power Platform. Everything runs through data, everything uses data. Power Apps, Copilot Studio, Power Automate, Everything is about the data. So in this section, you're really gonna be doubling down on that. Now, I'm sure you're wondering what data skills, there is so much to data. Do I need to be a data scientist? You don't need to know everything, but just know the foundations. Now, again, Microsoft have a really good learning path that you can use to double down on your data skills, and you can even take the certification at the end. It's not necessary, but again, you're just bumping up that CV, adding those skills. I believe it's the DP900, and it's the Azure Data Fundamental Certification. So take a look at that, follow the learning paths, learn about ERDs, data types, databases, SQL, learn about the foundations of data. The importance of data cannot be stressed enough within your Power Platform journey. So really double down and get your hands dirty with it. Now, speaking about data skills, I've got a program called the Model Driven Masterclass where we focus a lot on data and I effectively teach the skills within the Power Platform that effectively got me my high paying roles. We've got access to a paid community where you can ask questions. We've got access to the Model Driven Masterclass course and then also a bunch of other goodies. And for a limited time, I'm throwing in the Career Accelerator program, so the Power Platform Career Accelerator teaching all of the skills and all of my secrets that I know about growing within the Power Platform space. And that's going to be completely free with the Model Driven Masterclass for a short amount of time. So if you want more information about how I can help you, go to modeldrivenmasterclass.com. The link will be in the description. It'll be the top one that you see. And if you have any questions, you can always at me on LinkedIn at Howden Rashid and send me a message. I would love to answer them. But anyway, back to the video. Now, the next stage in your roadmap will be to learn in public. Now, I know what you're thinking. How the hell is learning in public going to actually help me land my first job within the Power Platform? Well, let me tell you, when you're just starting out, it is everything and you're looking for every chance that you can get. Being seen in this space is really important because it's still quite a niche. So you can really take advantage of learning in public, getting your name out there, getting people to know who you are. So when those opportunities come, people already see you as a credible person to work on those projects. Now, you might be at a point where you can't really post anything too much of value because you are in your very early stages, which is why we're learning in public. We're not trying to give everyone the most value possible. If you learn something new, share it. If you're building a project, share it. And where you should share it, do it on LinkedIn because from what I've seen, that's where the Power Platform community is the most active. Engage in the community, go to events if you can, get your name out there, help in forums, really try and provide value where you can, and then just show people what you're doing and what you're up to. Just imagine this, when an employer Googles your name, what are they gonna find? This is a great litmus test to understand how employable you are. 
if they type in your first name and last name, I know what they're going to find if they type in my first name and last name. There is a bunch of content in relation to the Power Platform and there is something to be said between content creators who can deliver the work and content creators who can't. But again, we're just trying to get our foot in the door here. So learning in public, getting your name out there, building your brand within this Power Platform space is extremely valuable. So do it. Employers know you're serious and the community knows you exist and they will help you. Eventually, while you are learning, you will actually find areas where you can give value for free. There might be a problem you are struggling with and I guarantee that if there is a problem that you are struggling with, there is at least one other person who has struggled with that problem before or struggling with that problem now and you can help them. So start small and expand with time. I'm a huge advocate for this. So put your nerves aside and start learning in public now. Now the next stage in this roadmap will be to apply to one job per day. Now you're looking for a job. So I want you to make a habit and a process of applying to these roles. Write your CV, make sure it's good, personalize your cover letter and start looking for roles. Even if you don't tick all of the boxes, right? Now you're just starting out, so don't be applying for architect level positions or senior level positions. But if you see something that's just titled Power Platform Developer or Power Platform Consultant, throw your hat in the ring. You never know what's going to happen and sometimes you just need that shot. When I was looking for my first Power Platform role, I was still in university, right? And honestly, for me to balance studying with full-time work was almost a myth. Like that, that probably wasn't going to happen in the way that I thought it would. But I applied to full-time jobs anyway. And when I got into the interview, they asked me if I was still in uni. And I thought the interview there was over, but they liked me enough to come to a compromise where we've had some middle ground. So I was working part-time until I graduated because they liked me. People buy you, right? So if you can make an amazing impression in your interview, you can apply for any role, even if you don't tick all of the boxes. So block an hour a day in your calendar to apply for at least one role and stay consistent with it. And hey, at the bare minimum, you'll be leveling up your skills, getting better to applying for jobs, personalizing your cover letter, and really setting that skill in stone as well. So apply for one job per day and don't give up. Also, we live in a world of AI, so I feel like I have to add this notice. Please don't make your applications AI generated fluff. Like I have spoken to so many managers who say 80% of the applications they receive look the exact same. Use AI to inspire you, but not to replace you. You're trying to get the attention of these hiring managers, right? And to do that, you need to stand out. Now, AI will really generalize you and limit you in terms of standing out. So add your experiences, use AI for inspiration, use it to polish up some areas, but don't let it replace your applications. Keep it professional, but make sure to show your character. Okay, so you're following all of these steps and you finally got your first interview. So this stage is interview well, first impressions count. Now, once you get an interview, it's in your hands and it's up to you to make a very good first impression. Now, I'm not a career guru or anything like like that, but I'm going to give you two game changing strategies that have helped me not fail an interview in years. It's like literally in the past six years, I think I've got two no's from interviews and I know exactly why that's happened. So these actually work. So let me break them down. Firstly, show them what you've built. It will really help you stand out. And this is why building a portfolio in the earlier stages is so important. Pausing the interview for a second and pulling it back to a question that the, the interviewer may have asked saying, hey, I've got something to show you. Do you mind if I just share my screen? Like a lot of these interviews are done online, right? So sharing your screen, showing what you've built, showing the solutions you've put together using the Power Platform is really going to help you stand out. Now I guarantee 90% of people who are interviewing for the same role are not doing this. So if you do this, it will help you stand out and you're more likely to get that role above someone who didn't. You've shown something practical. You've shown something material. You've shown that you can do the work and actions speak louder than words in my opinion. So really show off what you've done if the situation or the opportunity presents itself. So that's the first thing. The second thing is ask really good questions at the end. There is no harm in preparing some really good questions beforehand, taking them into the interview, writing it in your notebook, and when the time comes, they will always ask you at the end, do you have any questions for us? Now, for me, I love this part of the interview because this is your time to take control. This is your time to generate curiosity, to give your ideas, your opinions, show that you're more than just a talking head on the screen. And again, there's nothing wrong with you bringing a notebook and writing the questions on there and just saying, hey, I've got some questions written down. Is it okay if I ask them? 
they'll say it's completely fine, I am sure 99% of the time. So to summarize, make sure to show off what you've done in the interview and make sure to ask good questions. Now I can speak about interviews for a while, so if there's something you're interested in seeing, leave a comment or hit the like button if you're interested in a video on how to interview properly for Power Platform related roles, and I'd love to make that for you. So we've covered pretty much everything on this roadmap, and the last thing is stay consistent you'll get that. Now, I follow Alex Hormozzi, and if you don't know him, he is a business content creator, and he says something that I really like and I wanna share with you. Now, I'm paraphrasing here, but it goes something like, do so much work that you not achieving what you set out to achieve becomes unreasonable. Now that's why I put so much emphasis on consistency because you will get there with enough. Now, if you're applying to one job every month, you are very unlikely to get a role. But if you follow every step in this video, you are definitely more likely to get a role than people who don't. Now, it's not easy getting your foot in the door. Now, to this day, I've worked in architect level positions, senior level positions, earning way above six figures. And to this day, the hardest thing was landing my first junior role. The Power Platform is becoming increasingly more popular and it's getting harder and harder to break into the space, but it's still a niche. So your opportunity is now, take it. This space is evolving and it's a super exciting time to be here. With Copilot and Copilot Studio, Microsoft really doubling down on the Power Platform. It's an amazing time to be within this space. Now, as Power Platform professionals, we are at the forefront of organizations adopting this technology at scale. And I know you can get there too. So to reiterate this final point, stay consistent and I know you'll get there. Well, there it is. That's the roadmap that I would use to go from no job to Power Platform job if I was starting over. If you got any value from this video, it would mean the world to me if you hit like and reshare to someone who might find value out of this. It only takes a few minutes and it will show me that you want more content like this so I can keep making it for you. Links to all of the resources I was speaking about will be in the description, so go and take a look at those. And if you want more information about how we can help you at Power Academy, go to poweracademy.com or just message me at Howard and Rashid on LinkedIn and I would love to get back to you. There are so many of you trying to break into the Power Platform and my goal for this year is to help at least 100,000 of you do that, whether that's with free content, paid content, or YouTube videos. I wanna help as many people break into the space and learn in the space as possible. Thank you so much for giving me your most valuable asset, which is of course your time. And yeah, that's all I've got for today. So I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.